Excellent! The GeForce GTX 960 is NVIDIA's new sweet spot GPU and it's going to cost you about $200. I'm going to do the short version of this review right up front. This card performs very well at its price point, it uses significantly less power than the last generation GTX 760, and it's a recommended buy for PC gaming at 1080p. That last part about 1080p is very important, but more on that later. Let's start with a closer look at Zotac's GeForce GTX 960. This is the AMP edition, which means it's overclocked from the manufacturer, $210 MSRP, and it has what Zotac is calling Exo Armor. That's the back plate on the back, as well as the dark gray metal shroud. It's got a wraparound back plate, and then the cooler is what Zotac is calling Ice Storm. Uh, it has two fans on the front. It also has two copper heat pipes at the middle. They're very long, though. They go all the way across the base of the card and then come back around and go all the way back across the top. It's also got freeze technology. Zotac has lots of fun names for their stuff this year. Uh, that means the fans don't spin up until the GP reaches a certain temperature. That's all the rage these days. As such, this card seems geared a little bit more towards silent operation. It idles at about 40 degrees Celsius, that's passably cooled, of course, with the fans not spinning. And then since the fans stay at low RPMs, the temperatures do get up to the high 70s and low 80s under full load. But that didn't result in throttling, and remember NVIDIA designed these GPUs to run at 80 degrees Celsius. The upshot is that this card is very quiet. It's only 8.2 or 208 millimeters long, and thanks to GPU boost, the core clock out of the box is uh, going to run up as high as 1430 megahertz. I like the design of this card. It's actually got a, a nice dark gray finish. It's got some subtle kind of carbon fiber-ish accents, uh, a black PCB, and then Zotac gets extra bonus points for including that wraparound backplate. Just a single six pin peg connector is all that's needed since this card only draws about 120 watts max. Zotac's specs say they recommend a 500 watt power supply for your whole system, uh, but Nvidia's reference card only says you need 400 watt power supply, which I think you could get away with with this one because my max power draw un under testing was less than 300 watts and that's with an overclocked 5960X. The video outs on the back are the same as the 970 and the 980 with three DisplayPort 1.2s, one HDMI 2.0, and a Dual Link DVI, and you can power four displays from this single card. Feature support is also pretty much the same as the 970 and 980, including the new dynamic super resolution, uh, G-Sync and Shield support, GPU boost, physics, CUDA, etc., all that good stuff. But now on to the GTX 960 core specs. It's a brand new GPU, it's called the GM206, still Maxwell architecture, but that's as opposed to the GM204 that's used in the 970 and 980. When I first saw the specs of the 960, I was actually a little bit confused. I was surprised to see the memory configuration at least, and over the past couple days I've had this internal argument with myself, kind of coming at the GTX 960 from three different perspectives. PC perspectives? Anyway, the first perspective is actually NVIDIA's. They made the 960 after all, and they know a thing or two about it. I think NVIDIA's goal here is to jam as much performance as they can into a $200 video card without cannibalizing the sales of their other cards like the GTX 970. So you have 1024 CUDA cores, and they've juiced the GPU base clock to 1126, and the boost to 1178. But most cards, like Zotax here, are shipping overclocked even higher than that. But they also did some things to slow down the card's performance, and it's pretty clear to me at least that this was to keep the card from overperforming at higher resolutions. There's 32 ROP units, which is half of what the 970 has, for example, and only 2 gigabytes of memory on a 128-bit bus. The GTX 760 also had 2 gigabytes of memory by default, but it was on a 256-bit bus, which just kind of feels like a step backwards. Okay, if you can't already tell, the second perspective from the three I mentioned earlier is my own, and I am horribly spoiled by access to high-end PC hardware and 4K monitors and all that kind of thing. So when I start to agitate over these design choices, I have to remind myself to, to calm down that this is really just a $200 card, whereas the GTX 660 and 760, for example, were more in the $250 range at launch. I also think that I was so happy with the bang for your buck that was the GTX 970 release that I guess I kind of thought it would just always be that way. Anyway, the third perspective, since you're probably wondering, is that of a pretty standard PC gamer who might not have a lot of money to spend and who is perfectly happy with their 1080p monitor for the foreseeable future. Ultimately, I could only resolve this with benchmarks, so that's next. 
So some things to point out as we look at hardware specs. Yes, my test bed is super awesome. And thanks to Intel and EVGA and G-Skill for the CPU, MOBO, and memory. Also, I wanted to throw in a GTX 760 for comparison. And the only one I have is EVGA's four gigabyte for the win version. So bear in mind how having more memory helps its performance, especially at higher resolutions. Also, I do have an R9-280X. I was gonna do comparisons from Team Red, uh, but it failed spectacularly on me right at go time. So my, apology, my apologies for the lack of AMD representation, at least in this video. Maybe I'll do a comparison video in the future. 3D Mark, this is the only test I ran at 4K, and here is the best example of why the 960 is a 1080 card. Great at 1080, miserable at ultra. If the GTX 960 is doing its job, in my opinion, it should perform about 30% lower than the GTX 970. On to Bioshock Infinite. The GTX 960's marginal performance boost over the 760 didn't impress me much here. I run most tests with 4X anti-aliasing, and AA is something you want a lot of memory bandwidth for. Still, it's uh, setting about where it should compared to the 970. Metro Last Light. This one is always a killer, but I thought the 960 did a good job keeping the minimum frame rate from dipping too low and even hitting well over 30 FPS average at 2560 by 1440. For Crisis 3, the GTX 760 wins here, even at 1080, and I think that can be attributed to anti-aliasing and the heavy load that CryEngine puts on the GPU. Also a reminder, once again, that the GTX 760 has 4 gigabytes, whereas the 960 has only 2. And lastly, Battlefield 4. I actually think the thing that impressed me most was that you can finally get a card that holds above 60 FPS average playing Battlefield 4 on 1080 Ultra settings for $200. So now that we've seen some numbers, how do things look for the GTX 960? Well, from NVIDIA's perspective, I think they did their job. The card costs less than the GTX 760 did just a week or two ago. It holds its own for 1080 gameplay, and it even won't threaten their upper tier offerings that are designed for higher resolutions. For about two thirds of the price of a GTX 970, you get about two thirds of the performance. From my perspective, I would have liked to see just, just a little bit more from the GTX 960. In the past, this tier of card has seemed kind of like a gateway drug, teasing you with the performance that nips at the heels of $400 cards in some situations. I think what Nvidia is actually doing, and to be clear, I am just speculating here, I know nothing, uh, is leaving a space open for the GTX 960 Ti with maybe more memory bandwidth, more ROPs, more CUDA cores. Uh, also, a 4 gigabyte version of the 960 will probably happen at some point if history is any indicator. Ultimately though, I think it's the 1080p gamer's perspective that is most important, and I know there are a lot of you out there. For you guys, I think this card will do everything you want it to, and I think you'll be happy with it. Uh, I think this card could even hang with a 1440p monitor, but you're probably going to have to turn down some settings, maybe reduce the anti-aliasing and that sort of thing to get a good frame rate. But let me know if you agree with me in the comments though. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we'll see you next time. Ultimately though, I think it's the 1080p gamer's perspective that is most important. And I know there are a lot of you out there. Very durable, very durable graphics card.